want, you can open up into uh, the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> Honestly, you won't hear me say this very often, because this is such a familiar story, you, you don't even need to open the Bible up. You're that familiar with this story. I rarely ever preach stories out of the Bible, and when the Lord laid this one on my heart, I thought, that's kind of strange. It's so out of character for me. But little did I know the direction the Lord was going to take me in this passage of, of, of first, uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, the entire passage dealing with David and Goliath. And, and where the Lord has taken me on this is, is defeating the Goliaths in our life. And last night, most Saturday nights, I'm, I'm usually up all night. That's kind of a, a, a ritual for me to just, just stay up all night, in and out of the Word, and in and out of just meditating on, on the Lord, and, and, and just hearing some extra things maybe He would have uh, in, in, in my th thinking throughout the week on a passage. And uh, boy, last night, it just, it just seemed with such urgency of of understanding this passage on how to defeat the Goliaths in our life. We're going to have to learn how to have victory because I will tell you, when it comes time for David, and I'll walk us through that a little bit, but when it comes time for David to fight, he didn't need preparation. The preparation was already there. It didn't happen that day. And, and, and I just pray that, uh, that, that you and I get an understanding of where God is, is, is going with us in this and, and what we must do because... Anywhere you look today, there's big problems. They're, they're, they are those Goliath of problems. And, and therefore, there's so many problems. It looks too big. It's intimidating. And we just refuse to fight, not because we don't want to fight. We, how do you fight everything? I, I, I don't even know if your mind goes there or not, but, but I, I stay there. I stay there. Lord, how, how, do you, how am I going to fight this? And, and, and how am I going to go over here and address this? And, and I've not even got into my personal life yet. And it becomes overwhelming. It's too big. So I understand many times we, we, we don't engage because... Just, just thinking about it just wears us out. I mean, it, 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 if you just take the church, the church with, with its, its, its problem with the moral and social issues of the day. And, and, and I'm not going to go down these paths today. You, you know them. You're well informed. And we have a nation that's imploding. We understand this. And I will tell you, and now today, it's not Republicans against Democrats. It's not, it's not even progressive or liberals against conservatives. It's the Trump lovers versus the Trump haters. That's where we are as a nation. It doesn't matter how good that Donald Trump may want to do something, they're just not going to, the people that hate him are not going to have it because they don't like him. Now, I am going to say something right now, and this is not politically motivated, and it's not meant to, to beef up, to, to lift up Trump, because I'm not going to lift up any man. I, I like some things he's doing, there's some things I don't like. 
But I will tell you this. One thing that we've got to do is everything we do, we've got to at least investigate the Word of God. Why we think the way we do and why we believe what we do. We can't allow just, just the way it sounds or the way people have always told us to dictate our thinking. So I'm going to make this statement, and if you don't agree, then, then okay, but, but I'm going to tell you. Today, uh, uh, the, the, the problem is, is really not with Trump. It's, it's with Trump is a nationalist, and those that are fighting him are globalists. Now, you, you better understand this because this is why our nation is imploding. Now, I'm going to make this statement, but I will tell you this much. God himself is a nationalist. He's not a globalist. He is the creator of nations. And if you don't think he's a nationalist, then you just wait till he gets back. And you'll find out. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not going to go there. I told myself I'm not, because I, I could go down that path. But, but our nation is imploding. It is because the, the powers that be are trying to take our nation down a path. And then we, we have a problem in the nation between, uh, and it started out as simple, uh, 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 Sex outside of marriage, then we're moving in together, and now it's homosexuality, it's trans transgenderism. We, we, we've got people that's for it, people that's against it. We've got people now that's for marriage, people that's against marriage. And then when you think about the nation, you, you're, you're looking at, okay, some people have taken us from a republic to a democracy, and the millennials are wanting us to be a socialist. Our nation is imploding. And when I use phrases like teach the whole counsel of God, I'm talking about we must engage in this fight or we're going to lose our nation. And I'm going to mention this one, then I'm going to, I'm going to get off this. We don't realize how big an issue this is because we live in Tennessee. Open borders versus closed borders. Now I think I can go from the Word of God and make my stand on it. But the key word is illegal. But... but Regardless of where you stand, then we're going to have to address the issue. Number one, well, first of all, they say that, that in, in 15 or 20 years, the money we'll spend on health care over the diseases being brought here would more than pay for the wall that needs to be built. But in last month, February 2019, 76,000 illegal immigrants crossed over into the United States through the southern border. In one week, the Border Patrol gathered up 7,000. And in a detention center in Texas right now, they are dealing with 200 cases of mumps. And now we're fighting TB. It's showing back up in our universities. And they're tracing their bit. So, so whether you agree or not agree with open or closed borders is really not the issue. It's going to have to be dealt with. And I'm going to tell you, the church is going to have to get some skin in this game. We're going to have to. But before we do, we're going to have to, first of all, settle in our spirit and in our mind the Word of God. So, you know, I understand, I'm with you, this stuff, just, just those five or six things I mentioned there is too big. And I didn't even mention your health. I didn't mention your lack of employment. I didn't even mention your financial problem or your family problem or your marriage problem. I didn't even get there yet. No wonder, no wonder we... we 
we, we can't engage. There's just way too much going on. And, and, and the Bible is telling us that instead of looking at this as being something too big, we're going to have to look at it and understand what it is because we can slay these Goliaths. So you know the story, and I'm going to be sharing some of the Scripture throughout that passage, but you know it, you know it very well. You see here that the Philistines, and I, I want to make a little bit, if you'll give me a little bit of lead way, I want to make a few comparisons, but you'll see here that the Philistines, they had invaded Judah, and because Judah, Israel, was God's people, so I'm going to go as far as to say they had invaded Judah, and here the Philistine army is standing on holy ground. Could I say that and get away with it? Here they are standing on holy ground, and, and here the, the, the army, this Philistine army, they are challenging the God of Israel. They are challenging these people to just to do something. Oh, boy. Can I not really go there and preach all day long right there? Here you've got the enemy standing on God's territory, challenging the Christian people, if I can bring it to today, to do something. Now, uh, let, let, me, let me make a little comparison here. Because I, I, I wanted to put that holy ground there because I want to say something else. This for sure, in my opinion, the devil has come into America, for sure, the rest of the world, but surely America, and he's taken something sacred called the mother's womb, and he's destroying it, and he's just challenging God's people to do something. And God's people are acting like the Israelite army. Now, I know there's not going to be the amens, but I'm telling you, when the Lord gave me this, I had no idea the path He was going to send me down in this study. You see here the hearts of, of the Israeli army. They, they had just... Uh, their, their hearts just fainted at the sign of this, this Goliath, this man of war, uh, almost 10 feet tall. He had a breastplate, if I remember right, that weighed 120 pounds. His spear weighed 15 pounds. Let alone his name, Goliath, mean exiled, raging spirit. Now, I'm telling you, I am glad that his name means raging spirit because, first of all, I understand this is going to be a battle that's going to have to be fought in the spiritual realm. But this battle is going to be fought and won in the spiritual realm, but it's going to cause David to have to go against this man. He's going to have to give, he's going to have to uh, show Goliath just who God is. And today, I don't know if, if, if we're offended enough. But here is, here's the way this story is being played out. For 39 days, Goliath had come out onto the field and he would humiliate demoralize the Lord's army. Did you hear me? The Lord's army. How dare this man? And I will tell you, we need to develop a little bit of an attitude about this ourselves. How dare Satan come and do what he's doing to us? How dare Satan to come into the church, the American church, and rule the day like he's been ruling it? Well, there needs to be some righteous anger start happening. Amen anyway. 39 days, 
Not one, not one, hear me, not one, none, zero. I wish I knew how many was in the army. It don't matter. Not one had enough uh, 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 courage to overcome this, this, this test from Goliath, because that's all it was, was a test. Because you understand, Goliath is not going to be able to overtake them, overtake God's army. This was nothing but a test. And they failed. For 39 days, Goliath had taunted the living God, and no one had an answer to this challenge. Hmm. But then we know here comes David. We know the story. And I'm not going to go into the significance of 40. I, I, I love the, the numerics of this, but we'll let that go. So here comes David on the 40th day, and just so happens that day that, that David is coming in, it happened to be the same time of the day that Goliath would come out and issue his challenge again. And, and we know from the passage, when David heard this, because, you know, David loved God. But he, he done more than love God. He loved God. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, we were talking about love in Sunday school. Got into a spirited discussion, great discussion. And I'm thinking about that. David loved God. You, you know, if um, if you said something about Harry, I may stand up for Harry. Brother, I like you. Did you say something about my wife? It's a different ball game. Well, see, David... It was a different ball game. You're, you, you was talking about, and maybe we need to develop this type of terminology just to help us. David was saying, you're talking about my God, not God. You're talking about my God, just like my wife. You're talking about my God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine, is what David said. Who does he think he is to come in here and taunt the armies of God? Who does he think he is to come in here and, and talk about the living God like he is and to, and, and, and to carry on like he is? Why is someone not doing something? But I'm going to tell you what David did. I don't even know if he even thought about the other, the, the, the army or not. I, I would kind of like to think that he didn't. I would like to think that he got so zoned in that as soon as he heard that and he bellered out, that immediately he went to God and said, Lord, would you please give me permission to go and fight this man? Let me tell you, that terminology is not accepted today in the Christian world. Now understand, this is, we are talking about a spiritual warfare here going on. But I'm going to tell you, David's going to say some things in a few moments that if we said this today, that they, I don't know, they, if I said this day, you'd throw me out of this church. Do 
See, David went and he sought permission, not only from God, but he went to the king and he said, King, let no man's heart fail you on account of this man, for your servant will fight with this Philistine today. David woke up that morning, or when he heard that, he went looking for a fight. He seen the fight, and he went running toward that fight. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to, if you're like me, when the Lord begins to deal with you like this, and I hope that he does, because, man, I get fired up, and I'm ready to take on the world. And you're in here. You're nothing but a little boy. That's what Satan's going to do. Understand, Satan can't do anything, but he will get in your head. And then not only King Saul, but King Saul said, David, you can't do this. You're not a man tested in warfare. You're just a little shepherd boy. And I can see David just chomping at the bits. The reason I know, because those two didn't stop him. The next, the next one that tried to put fear and doubt in his mind was Goliath. And, he, and Goliath said, Am I a dog that you come to me with a stick? Boy, I'm going to feed you to the birds. Is that not what Goliath told David? But you know what David had to say? Hmm, listen, and, and I'm going to read it so I, you can't misquote me. You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands. Now, I'm good now. You're good with me, I'm good with you. Here's where I'm going to get in trouble. And I will strike you down and remove your head from you, and I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord, and He will give you into my hands." Is that not what he said? But see, that's not an isolated incident. You remember Elijah on the mountain against 850 prophets of uh, uh, the false prophets, 450 of Baal? And he told him, he said, okay, you can't get your God to wake up. Now let me tell you what my God's going to do. Clean the altar up, dig the ditches, put the sacrifice, pour the water, pour the water, pour the water, and my God's going to, he, he's going to lick up the water and it's going to consume the sacrifice. And you know what happened? God done exactly what Elijah said. When's the last time you did that? Now, I'm, I'm going to get into some Scripture in a moment. Because if you go out and you talk to the devil, uh, like David's talking to the devil, you ain't careful the devil eat your lunch for you. You, you better know that, that you've got a firm understanding of who God is. See, David knew some things. David's faith was not in question. He just reached down, and he went after Goliath with a stone. Now, whenever I was reading that, that David took a stone, and he fought 
and he killed Goliath, it reminded me of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had of the huge colossus, the the giant where Nebuchadnezzar had his dream and Daniel came in and interpreted the dream for him and it and it and it predicted four world empires. First one of course being Babylon, the Medes and the Purge, the Greece, and then the Roman Empire, and then what most people say the revived Roman Empire. But by the time we get down to the to the feet that's made of iron and clay Daniel said that there was a stone cut out of the mountain that rolled down the mountain and it destroyed this great statue, this world, because he's predicting world empires. And he says that stone that come out of the mountain was not cut out by man's hand. In other words, that stone is Jesus Christ. So what so what is happening with David, he met Goliath, he met his challenge, and he whipped Goliath with Christ. The stone. This is where we must understand, because I will tell you, guys, if, if we live long enough, we are going to need this type of faith and understanding. The Lord will not leave me alone with this. You can take it however you want to. God is giving warning after warning after warning. Get your stuff in order. You can either pass it off because everything looks good, stock market looks fine. I don't care what the stock market's doing. I am telling you, we might, God may have given us a man that could actually turn this nation around, but the powers that be are not going to allow it to happen. They aim to get him out, and if God don't protect him, they will get him out. This is a spiritual warfare. And it, 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 it's determined. David had faith right here. So much faith that he ran to this fight. But see, Jesus in Matthew's writing, Matthew chapter 17, he also talked about faith. He said, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, and you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, then the mountain will cast be cast into the sea. It will be removed. And so I'm telling you, these giants that we've got in our life, we must know that God has got this covered. We have spiritual glass, every one of us in our life. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but it's against this exiled, raging spirit. See, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Satan is doing nothing but building and creating strongholds in your life. And we are falling for it. Listen, guys. If we're not very careful, we fall right into Satan's trap. We start believing him. Just like he told Eve, God said, and he began to lie. He, he, he started sharing half-truths with Eve. And she bought into it, and we're buying into it. We give Satan way too much credit and way too much power that he does not have. His power is over the mind, first and foremost. 
If He can get into your mind and get into your thinking and cause you to doubt and cause you to fear, then the battle is won. And here's what we do as Christians. I don't know, we have created Satan to be some kind of humongous monster. And I've got a feeling when we get to heaven, we're going to look, we're going to look back and say, you mean to tell me that's what caused me all this trouble? But the reason is, is, is because the problems are real and the attacks are real and, 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 and it is happening. But see, we've been told. Now, I didn't get, I didn't get saved till I was 28 years old, but I was raised in the church and, and at 28 years old, I knew more Scripture than the people that were witnessing to me. So I, I've been in church, I've heard it all. And I know if you've been in church any at all, you, you know, if Satan's come at, against you, then we're, we're told was, just tell the devil, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You ever heard that before? How many times have you resisted the devil, and in Jesus' name, and the devil can't go anywhere? Do you know why it didn't go anywhere? It's because we were taking Scripture out of context. Or we only took part of the Scripture. And if there's one thing, if you allow me to stay at this church long enough, I'm going to bring some truth back into these things. In James chapter 4, see, when we love to quote that, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Well, that's all we quote of that Scripture. Well, let's back up, and it says, submit to God. Now, if you want the resisting to work, then there's a formula to follow. First of all, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Then he says, James is not finished, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. But he's still not finished. Now, here comes the submitting part. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. In other words, James is telling Christians to cleanse themselves and stop doing things that are not pleasing to God. Stop it. Stop with your double-minded. Put these things to rest. Quit having parts in it because this is how Satan is defeating. And you can quote the name of Jesus all day long if you are not submitting to the things of God. It's just another name. We've got to do this God's way. And the reason I'm telling you this is because they are things that's not coming at your door. It's already there. Some of you are going through it now. Some of you, you better get ready. But as a nation, as a whole, I am telling you, we better get ready for what's coming to this nation. And he says, stop this double-minded. The, the, some of these thoughts we're having is nothing but thoughts, demonic thoughts, were being oppressed of Satan. I didn't say possessed. Don't put words in my mouth. Oppressed. We're being oppressed of Satan. And we, we, we went through a class dealing with porn, but... But what you didn't know, it dealt hardly nothing with porn, but it had everything to do with what it does to the mind. That's where Satan's battlefield is at. That's where he's getting every one of us in our mind. And you might think, well, that's, that one's easy to get rid of. No, I'm going to tell you. This means that if, 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 you've been, if you've been going this direction very long, whether if you've been following this addiction very long, it, with porn very long, they're saying you're looking at five years to renew your mind. 
Jesus said that we should have the mind of Christ. But sometimes we shouldn't need five years. We need to deal with the problem right now. And I will tell you, we don't have five years, not only in the porn, but I'm telling you, we've been indoctrinated with things that are we're being told are a word of God, and it's not part of God's word. We're going to have to have a renewing of the mind. We're going to have to start taking the whole Bible and stop taking bits and pieces of it. This is Satan's strategy. This is why I make these crazy statements here that I hope to grab your attention when I say the devil is playing chess and we're playing checkers. Because this is what is happening. Now, if, if I could share, I don't know this to be true. If there's a book out there, I'd like to read it. But in my mind, just knowing Paul... And, and, and understanding when he went to Athens, when he was in Greece, and all the, the philosophers and the Greek mythology, and, and understanding the education of Paul, boy, can't you see him debating with the Greek philosophers of the day? And I have a feeling he probably even heard of Socrates. And probably heard of, of the book that, that, that we can now read called Plato's Republic. And, and if you read that sometime, actually if you'll read that sometime, you will see where we're headed in this nation. But he also deals with man, he, deal, he, he deals a little bit with religion, and then you get to Paul, and, and he's in Athens, and, and then all of a sudden you hear him to say, all my wisdom, all my fancy words, all of my education, I count it as dung. You know what dung is, don't you? If you don't know what it is, ask Leslie after church. <laughs> Do you know why? Because Paul said, my battle is not with these men. My battle, and he picks it up in Ephesians, my battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. And all my education is worth nothing. See, this is Satan's strategy. If you can understand and figure his strategy out, that's halfway to fixing this problem. Because if he, can, if he can put thoughts into your mind, these thoughts will turn into feelings, and if you nurse these feelings, they'll turn into actions. It'll happen every time. And then he's got you. And now we're playing hide-and-seek with our family don't want to be exposed for what we've done. And now we've made what could have been a very small issue, we've made a huge issue. And if that's you, God is still here telling you, you can slay that Goliath. Because the devil cannot touch you. He's a liar. He can't do it. And this mountain that you are facing, you can and will overcome this mountain. But whatever it is, get it out. Get it fixed. Get it over. Because I am telling you, there are other things coming our way. Get this out, whatever is in your life. And folks, I'm going to tell you, may, maybe something that, that every one of us need to do. Like, like David. Maybe we need to start taking this more personal. You, you know, Paul, and, and I, 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 I'm thinking it's in Corinthians. I wish I'd looked this passage up. 
my memory's not what it used to be. But Paul makes a, a, a weird statement about Christ. He says he emptied himself. And, and what, what Paul is referring to is that here you have Christ in heaven and, and being adored by the angels, all the angelic beings, all the heavenly host is singing and praising and honoring. He emptied Himself of all of that praise just to come to earth to be spit on and He did it for you. And now they want to tell me that Jesus is okay with a lot of this nonsense and that they want to portray Jesus the way they are? How da- Who are these people? <laughs> if you didn't hear that, somebody said heathen. I think it was Harry. <laughs> for, for you people out there in, in video land, that was Harry Meeks. Crossville, Tennessee. <laughs> if I knew your address, I'd give them that too, Harry. <laughs> Since I've picking on Harry, I've talked to this man and he will almost be in tears over the way people are acting toward Christ and toward this nation. He loves, and he, and he loves people that much that he, want, he, he wants them to hear. Maybe, and, and sometimes, uh, even, even I do, and, and Harry does too, it comes across that we're, we're upset, but you know what? Maybe I am upset. Maybe I am aggravated. They're, they're talking about my Jesus that said, you know, I'm going to leave all the heavenly bliss and I'm going to go to earth and I'm going to die a miserable death. I'm going from the glories of heaven to the pits of the earth. Now, I'm not separating myself from my deity, but I'm not, I am separating myself from the honor that, I was, that I'm getting. Because they're not going to honor me like this on earth. And He done that for me, so I think maybe I should get a little bit upset. Every one of you were on board with me getting upset if somebody comes against my wife. Well, my wife, she is not even on the same page as Christ. And I love her dearly. We came to an altar one day. Whether you know it or not, you made a commitment to God. You made a commitment to fight. You made a commitment to engage. Whatever He says, you made a commitment to it. Are you fulfilling that commitment? See, the Lord loves us enough... He's waking us up and He's telling us about David and Goliath so that we're ready for what... So these things that are coming against us, we can overcome these things. It's not going to neutralize us. We're going to be able to continue to engage in the battles and we're going to fight because we told the Lord we'd fight. May God help us to engage and fight. Yes, these are spiritual battles, but I'm telling you, that it's going to take the person to... Yeah, you've got to pray, you've got to be in the Word, you've got to do all these things, but then you're going to have to get on your feet and you're going to have to start taking this.
I'm going to be in Michigan next week. Scott's going to be filling in for me. I have no idea. I have no idea of, of who I'm going to get to minister to and who I'm not going to. I hope the Lord continues open doors because right now I'm looking at maybe the week after that to wind up in Dallas, Texas. If the Lord will just open that door up. But wherever I go, you better believe it's going to be a message that the church has got to get engaged. We must get, in, get involved in this fight. We've got to. And surely if there's a fight the church is going to have to get engaged with, it is this one on life. And with that said, I, before I would ask you to even write your congressman or anything, is pray. See, Tennessee, now l let me clear this up. Some people think Tennessee's already passed this heartbeat bill, it, that we've not. February 26th, it passed the Health Committee. Last week, it passed the House. Senator Mark Pody said in about two weeks he plans on having it on the full Senate floor for a vote. And he's expecting it to pass there. And he's already got a word from Governor Lee that if it passed the Senate floor and it's already passed the House, he will sign that bill into law. You better believe between now and the Senate, it gets on the full floor, Satan is going to be doing everything he can to stop this. So much so there's people fighting this that are pro-life because they're saying life starts before the heartbeat. And it does. But we need to make some strides. This is a huge, huge bill that needs to pass in the Tennessee Assembly. So you need to be praying over the next two weeks. And sometime between now and then, if you live, if you live south, of south of 52 from Jamestown this way, you need to be contacting Senator Yeager. Actually, all of Fentress County be Senator Yeager because our House representatives have already passed it. So you need to be calling or emailing Senator Yeager, because if we can't get life wrong, if we can't get life right, nothing else is going to work. God is the giver of life, and I'm telling you, I can see Satan there taunting us now, daring us to do something just like He did the army of God. Get engaged. Get engaged. Learn how to have victory. And you'll have that victory by proper interpretation. Stop taking everything that you've been told about the Bible and make sure that what you believe is true.